At now it's time for tithe and offering. Hallelujah. Let's go to the book of Malachi. Hello and welcome to the channel. How are you doing? Hope you are doing good. I remain George. Now after I made the last video, which I wasn't even expecting to kind of blow up the way it blew up right here on YouTube, this one, um, it was shown more to people under the curse of the law than people, I believe, understand the revelation of Jesus and what the New Testament itself really stands for. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles, that they might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Very important. If you are going to give to God as a New Testament Christian, don't give out of guilt. Don't give out of fear. I will not honestly tell you that because you don't pay tight, you will be cursed. It will not be biblical. With regards to how we should understand the Old Testament, seeing it in the lens of the New Testament. So I don't blame some of you for your reactions. But today, towards the end of this video, I have an apology about this video you might be interested in. But let's look at the main focus of today's video. So I came across this um, video. Of this Indian minister as you can see his picture on the screen right here his name is Zach Ponin okay so I'm gonna be telling you a little bit about him after you watch this video no preacher or elder in our church we never had pastors we called everybody elders no preacher or elder in our church will receive a salary zero and we followed that now for 44 years. We have 150 elders in all our nearly 75 to 100 churches with thousands of believers. Not one of them receives a salary. Not one of them is paid by the church for any service. I say, if you want to be paid, find some other church, not our church. We're not here to criticize you, but we say that's not the way God has called us to go. Secondly, we will never take an offering in our church because sticking a bag in front of somebody is like saying, give me some money now. It's almost like these people who put a knife behind you uh, and say, give me your money. It's something like that. Give me your money and I'll tell you how much to give. At least 10%. So we say, I don't see all that. In the Old Testament, it was true. They had to give 10% of their grain or their sheep to support the Levites. But in the New Covenant, it's not like that. It says God loves a cheerful giver. Now, how can you know whether a man is cheerful when you stick a bag in front of him? So we said we will never pass a bag around. <clears throat> and they graduated from bags to plates because in a bag, you don't know how much the guy is putting in. But when you put a plate in front of him, the guy will be embarrassed to put just one dollar there. He has to put more because others are watching him. So it's very clever the way people discover new, new ways of getting money from people. So we decided we're not going to try any of these gimmicks we said we will never take an offering but we read in the bible in mark chapter 12 that jesus sat next to the offering box you remember that story and a widow came and put two mites into that offering box and jesus saw it and he took all his disciples and see what this uh, widow put in there so i said offering box that's the thing we'll uh, keep an offering box and Jesus will sit near it like he did in the old days because he's the same yesterday, today and forever and he's the only one who will watch who's putting anything there. We're not going to have people watching it. Jesus will sit next to the offering box just like it says in Mark 12 and he will watch who puts in and who puts in less or more. That's between him and them, not between him and us. So we decided to keep the offering box and say those who want to give can put it whenever you want. So that's how they have one in the door there. That's how we do it in every church. Not always in a door, but keep walk somewhere. But we have some conditions. Now what you just watched there is something I found really strange myself when I was listening to him. Because first of all, you heard him say that in his church, according to the way God has called him, or what I say called his ministry, in his church, it's more of like, they don't really like have pastors, they have elders. And the elders themselves, of course, according to him, are not paid 
by the church all right so how does the church even function and what you were saying towards the end of the video is what i'll be discussing to you right now because i had to do my research to find out what really motivates them or what are the conditions that they have to even collect your money either as offering or whatever you want to label it as all right because some of you are in the um fighting a ministry which i'm not I, if you have watched me over time it's just so funny that i my recent video got so many new eyes on this platform that they don't even know what happens right here but i don't blame you you have your mind to yourself you have your faith to yourself like i was saying in most of the comments be ye cursed according to your own will who cares I mean, so this year is a year of miracles get a holy mind In this wonderful assignment, you need to go like this. Or use 500 naira or 1000. It's not touching any annoying. So right now let's look at a couple of things right here i got to observe when i had to go through his website to see those conditions he was trying to or would i say their financial policy with regards to how they conduct the act of giving but before we get there i want you to listen to apostle takim say some things i found really interesting that's how you see many of us preachers we don't preach this book we only use it we use it to collect tithe look at what we do and now it's time for tithe and offering hallelujah Let's go to the book of Malachi. Malachi chapter 3. Uh, Malachi chapter 3, verse... You know, <clears throat> if you don't give your tithe, you're a thief. Malachi chapter 3, verse 8. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offering. You see it. I'm not the one talking. It's the Bible. So bring your tithe and offering. You are using the Bible. When a preacher uses the Bible, he stands on scriptures to rob people of their money. When a preacher uses the Bible, he stands on scriptures to intimidate and destroy the faith of people. He will always quote a scripture upside down. May God bring you to the maturity in the faith where you, where you can detect when a preacher is using the Bible. There's a difference between using the Bible and preaching the Bible. A preacher can be quoting accurately one two three four five six seven eight but not explaining his quotes this book is to be explained not to be quoted are you understanding me it's that's how you see when you meet people who explain this book they can camp on one verse and pieces it bit by bit like meat not that you quote this one and quote this one and quote this one and quote this one and end up misquoting god if you quote too much, you will misquote God. If you quote this book without revelation, you will misquote God. I repeat, if you quote this book without revelation, you, you will misquote God. So this book is not to be quoted. It's to be taught, revealed to people. There's a difference between talking about tithe and teaching about tithe. Who is Zach Ponin? Zach Ponin is a former... Indian naval officer who has been serving the Lord in India for over 50 years as a Bible teacher. He has responsibility for a number of churches in India and abroad. He has written more than 30 books and numerous articles in English, which has been translated in many Indian and foreign languages. That is just a little summary about his person. Please, you can look him up and read up a lot of things about him. So let me go to his website right now and look at his conditions when it comes to offerings. The first condition here is are you a born again child of god do you agree with our doctrinal statement as given here and it now states what we believe it is our great honor and privilege to support the work of god on earth but that privilege is given only to those who are his born again children third john verse 7 do you believe in the god you think you are giving to even though you are supporting the ministry, which is the work of God. 
Very important. Number two, do you have enough money for your family needs? Wow. You have to even think about, do you have enough money for, for your family needs? Because even if you are giving cheerfully, do you have enough for yourself? So that tomorrow, we see right here in the church, where people always say that something happened to them and the church did not support them. And the next thing, they will start saying that, oh, I've been tithing and tithing. Had it been I had, had it been I had, I had not been tithing, I would have used those money to build house. You did it, you see, that, that, that is where you get to now know what was really the motivation of these people doing these things. What did they come to realize that make them make this kind of statement? Very important. So right here, it says here, are you sure that your giving will not put your family under financial strain? You must take care of your family needs first. And he quotes the scripture right here, Mark 7 from verse 9 to 13 and 1 Timothy 5 verse 6. Our father in heaven is very rich and he, like any rich earthly father, does not want any of his children to starve or suffer in any way just because they gave him money for his work. Can you see this? This is what I've been trying to make you people understand, but I don't blame most of you. Like I just said right now, be ye cursed according to your will. But let's go on right here. Come, come on. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Don't you read that in scripture? So what you believe in, without having a revelational knowledge of the person of Jesus, understand the new covenant right now you are in, I don't blame you. So do whatever it is that makes you feel okay. Some of you have done certain things all your life with the wrong understanding. And when you see more of like a new path of thinking, which is a pattern that you are not used to, it's all antagonistic for you, I must say. Going on here, the third, up, the third choice here, or the third condition here, or the third thing you have to think about here is, do you have any large debts to pay? If so, do clear those debts first. God wants his children to live restful lives, free from all debts. We must first give to Caesar what is his, before we can give anything to God, because God does not want us to give him Caesar's money or anyone else's money. Matthew 22 verse 21, Romans 13 verse 8. Please make sure you confirm these things and tell me if he's having the right understanding or not. Because one thing I see right here is that anytime we talk about the subject of money, I've never seen a subject that becomes so widely populated and discussed, especially in the Nigerian setting, or would I say the African setting, than when it comes to the subject of money. That some people will say that it's even criminal for you not to even tight. Interesting analogy, I must say. If we have this same focus when it comes to living right with God, enforcing righteousness in people, it would be amazing if we are having conversations about that. But those ones don't really get attention like that because even most times, the preachers themselves, the leaders of the church themselves are doing worse than what it is they themselves preach. I'm telling you, we have looked at a lot of them right here. Come on. You know them already. Just trying to make you think through certain things before you put in your money there as an offering. What offering are you giving to God? But in what condition are you as you are giving that offering? Going on here, he says here, do you have a clear number four? Or do you have a clear conscience? Have you done your best to reconcile with those whom you have hurt in any way? God would not accept any offering from anyone who has hurt someone and is still not and has still not apologized to that person. Matthew 5 verse 23 to 24. Do you hear this even preached by your pastors? When you come to the concept of giving or tithing or whatever form that money gets to come out from your pocket, where do you go to? Malachi. Where do you go to? Malachi. Where do you go to? Malachi. And look at what he's making you think through right now. Ask me a question or I'm asking you a question. Are these things not in scripture? Sometimes even the monies that are being tithed by people might even be fraud money, might be embezzled funds from the government. You think these things don't happen, they happen. But if you can keep this structure like this for people themselves to decide, to think through based on scripture before they put in their money. Someone would now say then, this man doesn't even want to get one kobo, but how long has his ministry been in existence? And he's still alive till today. You don't pay your elders in your church. It's not as if he discriminates other people, of course. You heard him say that. But do you think through these things at all when you are giving to your church? 
The last one here is, are you giving freely and cheerfully? Which is the most important, which is what I was mainly discussing in my other video, which Clifford Dollar himself talked about as well. And not under pressure from any man or even from your own conscience. Now, pressure from any man or even from your own conscience, which is very important. Look at the video I made before this one and think through it. God loves cheerful givers, not reluctant givers. He does not want gifts from those who give under pressure or who give in order to fulfill some obligations or who give merely to ease their conscience or give in order to get some reward from him in return. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7. Why do you really give to your church? Why do you really tithe? Because you are afraid of a curse. So if you believe in the curse of the law, which Jesus Christ himself became a curse for you, he didn't, came to abolish, he didn't come to abolish the law but to fulfill it. But how did he fulfill the law? You have to look at the life of Christ Jesus in print. Many Christians have not met Jesus. Or most times we cherry pick scriptures to use to suit whatever it is we want. Which I don't blame you at all. Call me Antichrist. Call me whatever it is that makes you feel happy in the comment. What I do here is aluta continua. But moving on here, he says, please bear with us as you go to church. Please bear with us as you go through this checklist. We are seeking to follow the example and teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ in financial matters. What example are you following in financial matters with respect to your church? What example are you following in your life as a person? You have been watching Being Real George for quite a long time. I have certain principles that I don't break for some reasons because it keeps me in check. Some of you know them already. But you have to understand something. When once you don't make Jesus the center of your theology, your understanding, because the Bible itself says in him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being. These days, I don't know what is happening in churches. I don't know what mindset you have right now as a Christian watching me. I've been a Christian almost all my life. I've never been in any other religion aside Christianity. If you think Christianity itself is a religion, which I think most of the time is more of like, I think Christianity is just a way of life. It's, it's being Christ-like. If Jesus is the center of our theology, then we can have a better understanding as to what it is we are doing. If you went through all of this, thinking through this before you put your money in there, I'm telling you, it could build a whole lot of faith in you that, oh my God, what you are going to put there is going to even make you feel more joyful giving. You give joyfully, thinking through all of this. Look at the part where he talks about if you are angry with your brother, if you are someone you are not reconciled with, wouldn't it even make you live a more loving life that is pleasing to God that you are sorting through all of these things before you even give to the church? Would you be thinking of, oh, I want to go to church on Sunday, I want to go to church on Monday, I want to go to church on Wednesday, or whenever it is you want to go to church and be thinking, how much do I have in my pocket? How much am I going to give? Oh, because you don't have much money, you don't want to go because then once they say stand up for offering, everybody is standing up to go and do the offering and then you are not standing. Everybody will see that you don't have money. That is what happens in many churches, for a fact. But here is where they have a different place entirely, a unique place entirely where the offering box is. They don't even get to pass it around in church or something. It is somewhere. If you want to give, you go there and do your thing. When they come, they don't know who gave this or who gave that. And everyone is good to go. Can that even happen in Africa? Impossicant. I guess not. There might be churches that do it so, of course. But many of the popular ones, I don't think so. This is when you now have a church that have people that can sit down, keep money aside, and really go to church because they want to build a loving relationship with God under a teacher that wants them to actually learn the principles of God. As time goes on, I know I've done a lot of criticism right here, you know, showing you, but I, I have to do them to poke some things for you to see what is happening. All right, I have to do them to put some things for you to see people for who they really are. Like I've told you in my previous videos, there are many wolves in sheep's clothing. I'm telling you for a fact. But if you don't get to believe that these things are happening, you will never believe that the scriptures itself is really, really true and real when it talks about false prophets, wolves in sheep's clothing, 
and those who appear or seemingly appear as if they are for Christ, but they are, <laughs> they are for, the, for themselves. Now, concerning my last video, what I would really, really want to apologize for from my last video, which I think really blew up here on YouTube, was is just the fact that I gave you the impression that the main subject, um, Pastor Ia Adeboe himself, like he repented, which was not that. So what I was projecting is more of like what I want or what I hope changes with regards to the whole idea of using the curse mentality to preach about the concept of tithing or wanting people to give into church instead of preaching to them love. So that concept itself of me presenting to you like, but all of it, come on, it's all the same thing. Every, every, every content you see right here on the platform is titled and presented in a way for you to come in. So I was presenting to you without you watching the video, you would think that, oh wow, what has changed? Has it changed? But only for you to come and see the exact same thing that has always been there for a long time. Remember the same person said that if you don't tie it, you wouldn't make heaven. You understand? And the what I saw was just something new and I shared that to you. What I shared to you right here, are they fact-based or am I picking them up from anywhere? And some of you will say in the comments, oh, you play only small, but why don't you play five hours? If I play for you two hours of a whole sermon right here, will you sit down here and watch it? You won't. So don't try to sound so hypocritical in your comment. Face the facts of what is being discussed. What is the statements being made? Understand that and try to ask yourself a couple of questions. Are you learning in any way from this? Are you doing what you are doing with the right motivations? Are you becoming better off from watching Being Real George? If not, stop watching me. When you see my videos, my thumbnails look exactly almost the same when it comes to the text. You can see it, you can see the name. Don't click in to watch my videos. I don't need your attention if you are not getting any form of value from watching me. Of course, I cannot stop you from giving your opinions in the comment, but try to be a little bit civil. I won't call your quote and unquote papas, men of God, gods, whatever, unprintable names. But if I want to discuss what I want to discuss, you can't stop me from sharing my opinions because they have to be as real as possible, as factual as possible. If you like, you believe it. If you like, don't believe it. But I'll see you next time. I love you. Bye bye. Yeah.